Good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of Pro Wrestling Talk, hosted by Blitzball Champ, here on the U to the Tube. Um, so for tonight's episode, we're gonna, gonna talk about quite a bit. Um, gonna do a quick recap of the first round of the Cinderella Tournament and Stardom, um, and also go over uh, the second round matchups. Um, we're going to talk a little bit of AEW as well. Um, we're also going to talk, uh, uh, up a, um, update on the New Japan Pro, excuse me, the New Japan Cup USA tournament, which, uh, had the semifinals, which just, um, finished, I just finished watching, um, about a couple of minutes ago. So we're going to go over that. And, um, of course, going to talk about WWE, um, mostly um, just a recap of the week. But also, um, we had some, some releases that were posted. Um, apparently, 10 superstars, I believe. 10 superstars from the WWE got released. And apparently, one AEW star got released as well. So, I'll go over over those as well but uh we got a good bit to talk about tonight so um definitely good to be back on here but uh yeah let's go ahead and get started with stardom let's start off with some stardom so the cinderella tournament has already kicked off gone through the first round matchups so one thing i do want to note that um saki kashima was supposed to be part of this tournament but due to sickness um apparently she um had to um bow out of this tournament and her replacement ended up being rena from uh Oedo tai so unfortunately no saki kashima for this year's cinderella tournament such a bummer but i mean gotta look out for your health first and you know, things like this happen, and it's just really unfortunate timing for her. Because I think Saki Kashima would have done pretty pretty well in this tournament. Potentially well. But, anyway, let's go over, let's go over some, uh, let's go over some um, highlights of the first round. So, we had a first round matchup. Himeka of Donna Del Mundo taking on Stars' Hanan. And, um, you know, it was definitely good to, it was actually pretty cool to see this matchup. You know, Hanan, you know, seems like she got taller and definitely, uh, definitely was a pretty good match seeing these two ladies go at it. Um, Hanan has definitely been improving in the ring. And of course, Himeka, the Jumbo Princess, definitely has been able to hold her own, but, um, Emeka was able to get the, the JP coaster on uh, Hanan for the victory to, um, to advance. Now, also keep in mind, remember, for the Cinderella tournament, you can win by pinfall, submission, um, dis disqualification, or um, over-the-top rope. So all four of those ways are ways that um, can decide the, the outcome of a match. In this tournament. Um, next up, we had uh, Micah of Donna Del Mundo, a strong heart Micah, going up against uh, Oedo Tai's Konami. And I have to say, I was very intrigued by this matchup. Um, both definitely have similar styles, and I was really looking forward to this matchup. Um, it was originally pretty hard to pit one over the other, so I I ended up going into this match neutral. I just wanted to see a really good match. And um, there was a point where uh, both ladies were over, went over the top rope and were on the apron. But um, Micah was able to uh, get the suplex onto uh, Konami. And uh, Konami fell to the floor. So Micah ended up winning this match. And I have to say... I would have liked for this match to have been longer, but being that, you know, 
this is a tournament match. I mean, typically the tournament matches don't tend to be that long, but I really hope to see these two match up again, maybe like on a bigger stage. And I really want to see them get a good long match, Micah and, and Konami. I really like this matchup, and I hope we get a chance to see it again, um, just a much longer match. But Micah uh, advance with the elimination of Konami. Um, we had Unagi Sayaka um, from Cosmic Angels, one-third of the Artist of Stardom trios champions, going up against the leader of Oedo Tai, Natsuko Tora. I got to be honest with you. I was kind of shocked. I was kind of shocked at the outcome of this because... Natsuko Tora went charging at Unagi Sayaka, and she got out the way and pulled down the rope, and bam, over the top rope, Natsuko Tora does. And um, that just goes to show you that. I guess that's why that rule is there. But um, because of that, Unagi Sayaka advances, dethrones Natsuko Tora. I mean, on paper, this is pretty much an upset. It's an upset. But, um, hey, guess when you're, um, you got to think quick on your toes. And she was able to, um, pull the ropes down. Natsuko Tor flies right over. So, hey, can't argue with that. Unagi Sayaka advances. Um, next up we had, uh, Queen's Quest Azumi going up against Oedo Tai's Rina. Now this, this makes me wonder. Because... Um, of course, with help from Oedo Tai, Rina was able to defeat Azumi. Um, it was an over the top, uh, over the top rope elimination. But it kind of makes me wonder if Saki Kashima was wrestling, would she would she get the victory anyway? Because it kind of makes it seem, it just seems kind of off with Rina get, getting this victory over Azumi. I mean. But it's another upset. On paper, it's another upset. Just like with Natsuko Tora being eliminated by Unagi Sayaka. But it does kind of make me wonder if Saki Kashima would have still gotten the nod to, um, to get this victory, be booked to get this victory over Azumi. But um, instead, Rina gets it, and Rina advances. So um, we'll have to look at the second round matchups to see... See what that matchup will look like. See who she gets paired with. But, um, yeah, Rina defeats Azumi. Who, who would have thought? Um, we also had uh, Starlight Kid versus Momo Watanabe. Um, a matchup that I do like. I definitely do like this matchup. And um, it was close. It was really close. I definitely felt... Like, both competitors really brought it. But, once again, another over-the-top rope elimination with the help of um, a Kichan bomb, which is something I haven't seen Starlight Kid do in a while. I feel like it's been a while since she's done that move lately. So, she was able to pull it off on the apron on Momo Watanabe and was able to defeat Momo Watanabe. And I was kind of... A part of me was bummed because one of my thoughts was potentially Momo Watanabe winning this tournament because I felt like she really needed a big win to really bounce back and get her into the title picture because she, you know, she's had a few title shots but really just hasn't been able to get the big wins lately. So I was thinking this tournament was going to be what kickstart Momo back into the title picture, but. Didn't go well, but hey, I do like Starlight Kid, so, you know, like I said, I, I'm okay with the result. I just kind of feel for Momo Watanabe, because she was somebody that I was kind of thinking would be a good pick to win this tournament. But, Starlight Kid gets the victory, and she advances. Um, We had Mayu Iwatani, Stars' is Mayu Iwatani, going up against the newest member of Oedo Tai, Uki Ken Death. Which, I mean, I was kind of disappointed with um, her new look. 
I mean, she's she's in the same clown outfit, but just different, different face paint. Like, they could have really done something, like, different to make her different and unique. But she pretty much is, just looks like Goki Ken Def with different face paint. That's it. So, I don't know. I hope, I hope they, uh... I hope they kind of change up her look a little more from the clown outfit. It just, with her being an Oedo tie, it just, just looks weird. But at least, you know, she did pretty much embrace the Oedo tie ways. Um, it took a little bit, but she embraced the Oedo tie ways during the match. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough for her to defeat Mayu Iwatani as... Mayu Iwatani was able to get the victory, which, not surprised. I mean, can't have the icon of stardom get upset like that in the first round. You know, no offense to Fuki Ken Death, who is a good wrestler. But I, I felt like it was obvious that Mayu Iwatani was going to win. Um, We had Julia versus uh, Ruoka. Um, Donna Del Mundo's Julia Oedo ties Ruoka. And, um... I gotta give it to Ruoka. She she brought it. She definitely brought it in this match, but I mean it is Julia. And uh Julia was able to hit a northern light bomb and uh get the victory over Ruoka. But um you know definitely I, I'm definitely digging this new look, Julia. I mean, I'm not a super big fan of Julia, but I definitely dig this new look of hers. It it works. It definitely works. Um we had Utami Hayashishita of Queen's Quest, the current World of Stardom champion, going up against uh, Cosmic Angel's Mina Shirakawa, uh, one-third of the Artist of Stardom trio's champions. Um, once again, another great match from Mina Shirakawa. And, of course, she got the preemptive attack on Utami while she still had her um, entrance gear and her mask on. But another great match, and I'm just really happy to see how well Mina Shirakawa's been doing lately um, in her last couple of matches. Um, and there was even a point where uh, Utami was, was bleeding, which, you know, she was kind of... She looks crazy when she bleeds from the mouth or from the nose. She looks kind of crazy. She was all licking it up and everything. It was weird. But that's Utami. She's the champ, and she's crazy. But um, Utami was able to get the, su the um, German suplex on Mina Shirakawa for the victory. But definitely, definitely a great showing for Mina Shirakawa. And I'm hoping that at some point she gets a singles title shot of some sort. You know, whether it's against Tom Nakano, uh, Utami, or, or Shuri. I think she could she could go for a singles title at some point. So keep an eye out for that. Um We had Saya Kamatani of Queen's Quest versus the Wonder of Stardom champion and also one third of the Artists of Stardom Trios Championships, the leader of Cosmic Angels, Tam Nakano. I have to say so far this was my favorite match of the tournament so far. This was my favorite match of the tournament. Um I'm telling y'all, Saya Kamatani is on a whole nother level and she is constantly showing off and getting better in the ring. And I make this declaration at some point before the end of this year, Saya Kamatani will be a singles champion. At some point before the end of this year, I'm, I'm claiming it right now, she is going to be a singles champion in stardom before the end of this year. Watch. Watch. But great strong showing against Tam Nakano and ended up eliminating Tam Nakano with a springboard Hurricane Rana on Tam Nakano, pretty much flipping her over the top rope and to the outside. 
like just a crazy, crazy elimination from Saya Kamatani to Tam Nakano. Wowzers. Like I said, that was my this is my favorite match of this tournament so far. And just what a unique way to do the over the top rope elimination. So Saya Kamatani advances and honestly she could be a sleeper to win this tournament she could actually be a sleeper to win this tournament we'll see but saya kamatani keep your eye out on her girl's a beast and then we had a uh, shirty versus the current high speed champion natsupoi both members of donna del mundo um this was a good match as well uh it was good to see both these ladies go at it they're pretty much like big sister little sister but um definitely had some close calls there uh from natsupoi on uh shuri but ultimately um a buzz saw kick to natsupoi finished her off and um you know it was a great match you know they embraced afterwards and uh these ladies are great these ladies are definitely great and um but you know shuri is the the stronger of the two so and she has quite a high winning percentage in stardom so i didn't really see natsupoi going over shuri but she definitely Gave her a great match, for sure. Um, also wanted to note that uh, they had a match, um, Hina versus uh, Lady C. And um, I have to say, Hina, Hina's been improving as well. You know, Hina picked up another victory. And, you know, she recently had the victory um, in the three-way match at um yokohama dream cinderella so hina has definitely got a few wins there we'll have to see what happens with hina keep your eye out on on hina i mean i know she beat lady c you know lady c has yet to win a match but still you know since returning hina hina's been making some noise so we'll have to we'll have to see what that turns into but hina hina's looking good so far so good stuff, good stuff. But that concludes the first round of this year's Cinderella tournament. Let's look at the second round matchups. Okay, so the second round of the tournament will take place at Corican Hall on April 30th. So we we still got a little bit of time before then. Um, they're going to do some some more stardom uh, regular uh, tapings, but. The continuation, pretty much the rest of the tournament, will finish out on April 30th. But here are the matchups that we have. So, second round. Um, so, we got Shuri versus Utami Hayashishita. So, we potentially have a preview of a future World of Stardom championship match in this tournament with this matchup. So, we got Utami Hayashishita, the World of Stardom champion, taking on the SWA and one half of the Goddess of Stardom Championships, um, Shuri, who's champion with um, Julia. I failed to mention that earlier. But yeah, honestly, this, this could go either way. This could go either way. So, this... This should be a good match. This should be a really good match. And the crazy thing is the winner of this match will go on to face Unagi Sayaka. <laughs> so either way, she's going to have her hands full against either Utami or Shuri. But yeah, the winner of that matchup will face Unagi Sayaka. Okay. And then we got Julia... We got Julia versus Micah. So, another uh, Donna Del Mundo showdown. Um, this should be really good. Uh, 
Micah and Julia, this should be a really good matchup. Um, Micah could go over Julia, but uh, it's probably not going to happen. Because, I mean, you know, this company loves them some Julia. And, you know, they're pushing her to the moon once again. I mean, she lost the Wonder of Stardom Championship and in just only a matter of weeks wins the uh, Goddess of Stardom Tag Team titles. It did not take long to put a title back on her. So, um, let's see. We got Starlight Kid versus Saya Kamatani. Now, this should be a great match, and I hope these ladies get plenty of time. This should be a great match. This should really be a great match. So, I'm looking forward to this match. Saya Kamatani and, and Starlight Kid. Um, we have Mayu Iwatani versus Rina. I mean... I know Rena got the victory over Azumi, but I really do not see her beating Mayu. I really don't. I don't see her beating Mayu. But the winner of that matchup will face Himeka. So it's most likely going to be Himeka versus Mayu Iwatani. So, yeah. But yeah, those are your, those are your second round matchups. So just to review again. Shuri versus Utami Hayashishita. The winner of that faces Unagi Sayaka. We got Julia versus Mika. We got Starlight Kid versus Sayaka Matani. And we have Mayu Iwatani versus Rina. Winner of that matchup faces Himeka. So those are your um, second round matchups. Uh, which, like I said, they're going to do second round semifinals and finals all on the April 30th show at Corican Hall. So, looking forward to that. But that will do it for um, Stardom. Like I said, um, we're going to be busy with the with the tournament. And it will be really interesting to see who ends up winning this tournament. Because remember, the winner, um, if I remember correctly, they get the Cinderella dress and they have the right to challenge for pretty much any title they want to challenge for. So that's what you get for winning that tournament. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, we had the semifinals of the New Japan Cup uh, earlier. And um, also had an uh, eight-man tag team match. To start off, um, it was the DKC, Kevin Knight, Alex Coughlin, and Carl Fe Fredericks against Jordan Clearwater, Adrian Quest, Barrett Brown, Mysterioso, which Mysterioso got the victory after a backstabber, uh, got the victory for their team, and apparently Barrett Brown was pissed about it, which was really weird. It's like, uh, hello, we, we won the match. And he was pitching a fit. So, yeah, interesting sequence. But pretty much, it was, you know, a couple of the young lions in this match. Uh, so we got to see those guys showcased. Uh, Mysterioso, which I've seen before. So, um, so yeah, it was an open, opening match. It wasn't a long episode, so, yeah. First semifinal matchup was Tom Lawler, filthy Tom Lawler, versus Hikaleo. This was a nice back and forth match. Um, both had good offense. Both were pretty much hitting each other hard. Very much back and forth. But filthy Tom Lawler was able to take advantage of Hikaleo getting back in and hitting an inside cradle to get the pin. And Filthy Tom Lawler advances to the finals of this tournament, this New Japan Cup USA tournament. And then we had the other semifinal match, Brody King versus Leo Rush. Um, this was definitely a match I was hyped about. And it definitely showed. 
And, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a given for Brody King, because after all, Leo Rush has beaten bigger opponents before. I remember the first time I saw Leo Rush back in ROH. I mean, he ended up winning the top prospect tournament. And one of the folks that he beat was uh, Damian Priest. Well, back then he was known as um, Punish, Punisher Martinez. But yeah, he beat him. And he's much taller than Leo Rush. And that was a great match, too. I remember seeing that match on ROH TV. But, um, but yeah, Leo Rush did what he normally does with the, the quickness, the high flying. But ultimately, it wasn't enough. And Big Brody King, with a gonzo bomb, especially after a sickening clothesline, hit him with the gonzo bomb, got the victory. So we have our finals matchup for the NJPW Strong Openweight Championship. Filthy Tom Lawler, Brody King. That's your finals matchup. And honestly, I hope Brody King wins. I want him to win. Like I said, I enjoyed him back with Villain Enterprises, the Dudes of Beast. I would love to see Brody King win. Really, really would. But um, that's your finals for this new Japan Cup USA. And we're going to see a new champion crowned uh, next week. So should be interesting. Should be very interesting. But um, that is pretty much it for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I know uh, they don't have... I know Wrestling Dantaku isn't until May 3rd. So they still got a little while. They're still rocking on the road to Wrestling Dantaku Tour. So that's still going strong. But... Yeah, they're going to be busy. going to be real busy. Uh, just a couple of highlights from, from AEW. Um, had an incredible, incredible AEW tag team title match. The Young Bucks defending against Death Triangles, Ray Phoenix, and Pac. Um, like, I could see these two teams wrestle over and over and over again and it's going to be special every time um phoenix that dude is insane with a lot of the stuff that he does but just seeing the, these two teams wrestle i mean it's just it's magic the chemistry the spots just it's magic of course young bucks with the the changed attitude, you know, the elite are back. But um of course Young Bucks doing doing some dirty tactics and snatch the mask off of uh Ray Phoenix. So he got demasked. And then um they were able to capitalize and uh pin him for the one, two, three. So just yeah, dirty, dirty move. But um, it was definitely a great match. I mean, we saw a lot of high flying. We saw another Canadian destroyer, which seems to be common in this in this matchup. But um, everybody was flying all over the place, um, especially Phoenix. Phoenix, that dude is sick. Like the moment where he leaped over the barricade. And then came back and hit a jumping cutter was just, oh my goodness. Phoenix is insane. That dude is insane of a luchador, of a high flyer, cruiserweight, whatever you want to call him. Ray Phoenix is insane in the ring. That dude is insane. Um, But yeah... Young Bucks do retain, not surprised. But like I said, they're um they're heels now. And like I said, they're back with Kenny Omega, the elite are back. Um 
at Jade Cargill wrestle Red Velvet and beat Red Velvet. Man, I was so mad. I do not like Jade Cargill. I don't like her. I don't like her. But I gotta give kudos to Jade Cargill. Or not Jade, bump her. Red Velvet for bringing it in this matchup. I honestly thought there was a good chance Red Velvet could pull it off, but nah, they're gonna continue to build up Jade Cardgill. She's currently undefeated, so they're probably gonna keep building that her up and get her up in the rankings. Um The worst segment of the night though was okay, Anthony Agogo's match, his debuting match. He got a victory by referee stop stoppage from one punch to the gut on this this debuting jobber, this Cole Carter. Really? A gut punch? I know he's I know he was a boxer, but really? Not even a pen or any just a gut punch equals a referee stoppage. That was just lame. That was a really lame finish. That that was a lame finish. A really, really lame finish. But that's the debut of Anthony Agogo. Just really, really dumb. Um We had Chris Jericho versus Dax Harwood, which was a good match. There was a lot of um, involvement, of course, between uh, Sammy Guevara and Cash Wheeler. And Mike Tyson was the special enforcer. But um, it was definitely a good match. Uh, definitely back and forth. And, you know, there was some interference here, interference there. But Mike Tyson was the equalizer, ultimately. Uh, ended up knocking out Cash Wheeler. Just, just good old knockout punch. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. Jericho was able to get the victory. And I know that uh, the Pinnacle tried to interfere as well, you know. And then the uh, Inner Circle was pretty much, like I said, everything was kind of... Uh, chaotic but Mike Tyson was really the deciding factor you know was the ultimate equalizer but um Jericho gets the victory Mike Tyson is deemed new member of inner circle so hey I can dig it I can definitely dig it Jericho and Mike Tyson are cool now yay <laughs> but um it was good to see uh, Chris Statlander uh, made her in-ring return, uh, defeated Amber Nova. Um, she looked great. Didn't show any signs of ring rust or anything like that. You know, did a couple of, did some boops. But uh, it is so good to see Chris Statlander back. She looks great. And um, it was good to see her get back in the ring and do what she does best. And she was able to get the victory, get give a supernova to Amber Nova. <laughs> supernova to Amber Nova. <laughs> so funny. Um, to get the victory, and yeah. So hope to see Chris Statlander back back in the rankings. And I'm just glad she's back. She hasn't shown any rust. Really glad she's back. Um, Christian Cage. Got the offer to join Team Taz, ended up declining it, and paid for it with a beatdown from Powerhouse Lil Hobbs. And of course, because of that, a match was made between those two for next week. So, I mean, I didn't think he was going to join Team Taz anyway. So, not surprised. But dang, he took quite a beatdown from uh, Powerhouse Lil Hobbs. So, which he's apparently in the rankings, Powerhouse Will Hobbs. As a matter of fact, let me look at these rankings. Yeah, he's ranked number five. 
with a 5-0 and singles record. Yeah. So, he's actually in the rankings. Who would have thought? But, um... But yeah, they'll square off next week. Um... And we also know that, uh... Hikaru Shida will defend the AEW Women's Championship against Ty Conti next week as well. Which, I mean, ultimately, it's looking like what's going to happen is Shida will retain, which will cause her to fall in the rankings. And pretty much Britt Baker will end up being number one. I mean, she's been wrestling and been getting getting victories. She's been wrestling on on dark and dark elevation, trying to get her wins back up. And you know, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say Ty Conti's not beating Sheeta next week. But I think what's gonna happen is with Ty's loss to Sheeta, she'll come down and pretty much uh Britt Baker will move up. Um, same thing happened to Red Velvet. She lost to Jade Cargill, got bumped down. Britt Baker is going to keep going up. And my guess is Britt Baker is most likely going to have her title shot at double or nothing. I'm already calling it. You know, at that time, that will mark the one year anniversary uh, since Sheeta won the title because it was double or nothing last year that she'd have beat Nyla Rose to win the title. So, I think it's safe to say that double or nothing will be where Sheeta finally gets dethroned and Britt Baker becomes AEW Women's Champion. And she will become the, that means she will become the fourth AEW Women's Champion. Wow, not not a lot of women's champions so far in AEW. But so far, we, we've only had three. Riho, Nyla Rose, Hikaru Shida. So it, look, it looks like it's safe to say Britt Baker will be the, be the fourth. I just, I just feel it's coming. You know, Shida's been a great champion. You know, she's, she's the longest reigning champion of AEW. And, you know, at that time, she, she will have had the title for, for a year. So, I think it's safe to say that's probably where Sheeta will get dethroned. My only, my only complaint, and this is a minor one, my only complaint is being that still to this day, Britt Baker has not defeated Nyla Rose and Sheeta has beaten Nyla Rose three times. Something would just kind of feel off if Britt Baker were to dethrone Sheeta, but yet not one time has she ever beaten um, Nyla Rose. So that's my only kind of eh, minor issue with this. But um, I was talking to a friend of mine, and he was thinking that what's probably going to happen is Nyla Rose is going to eventually get another title shot, but this time Britt Baker is going to be the champion. And then that's probably when Britt Baker will finally beat Nyla Rose. So that could happen as well. But um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I'm pretty sure... All this is going to lead to Britt Baker getting the title shot at Double or Nothing in May. Um, main event, Darby Allen defended the TNT title against Big Money Matt Hardy. Um, it was an excellent match. I mean, we saw uh, All Ego, Ethan Page, and Scorpio Sky watching, which, like I said, don't like the fact they're, that they're a tag team. But... Um, This match was also pretty chaotic. I mean, we saw Butcher and the Blade appear, Private Party appear, the Dark Order appear, Sting appear. Like, 
it was craziness. Definitely craziness. But still, a great match between between these two. Um, it was definitely back and forth. Um, even a Murder Hawk monster Lance Archer came out, which, you know, he does what he normally does. But um at the end of the at the end of the night, it was a big, big, very well perfectly executed coffin drop off of one of those um what was it steel pillars whatever it's called um but yeah hit a death defying coffin drop onto Matt Hardy through a table and was able to get the one two three to retain uh the TNT championship. This was a false count anywhere match so with that being said, there's no disqualification, henceforth, the amount of chaos. But um, definitely, I felt like either that or the tag team title match could have been the main event, so I can't be too mad. But a uh, pretty decent episode of AEW. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed both both of those matches. Um, I also, and it was good to see Chris Statlander is back, so that was really cool to see. Like I said, the only negative moment of the evening really was the Anthony Agogo debut match, which, that was just, that was kind of lame. No, not kind of lame, that was very lame. But, um, yeah, that'll do it for, uh, AEW. Now on to, uh, to WWE. Um, I mean, when it comes to Raw, I think probably the only positive thing that happened on Raw was the return of the Viking Raiders. The Viking Raiders are back. Ivar is all healed up and medically cleared. Therefore, Eric is back. And we had the Viking Raiders. Um, they were back. They defeated uh, Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. So, well, that's one tag team that's been restored now in the, the Viking Raiders. Um, Charlotte is a heel again. And pretty much gave a good heel promo. That's one thing I'll, I'll say. Charlotte still is very great on the mic. But, I mean, she pretty much said what I'm sure a lot of people would think she would say. I mean, Charlotte isn't one that will stay face for long. So, the fact that she's back to being a heel, not surprising at all. But, pretty much, she's back to her old self. Um, and, of course, she interfered. And the Raw Women's title rematch between uh, Rhea Ripley and Asuka. And she ended up attacking both Rhea and Asuka, which is, is apparently going to lead to a uh, Asuka versus Charlotte Flair match uh, this coming Monday on Raw. So, eh. Not really excited. I mean, Asuka versus Charlotte. I mean, eh. It's so funny. Not too long ago, they were tag team champions. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, Matt Riddle versus Lashley. I mean, seen it before. Not really anything shocking. Um, Damian Priest had a two on one handicap match against The Miz and Morrison. Maurice was out there. Which, ugh, don't like Maurice. But, Miz was able to get the pin with his pants down, feet on the ropes. Really, <laughs> okay. That's, that's all I can say is, is, is okay. But, I mean, it's fine. I mean, Damian Priest and Bad Bunny just recently got a big victory on, on WrestleMania. So, eh, this doesn't bother me too much. 
Um, so, the, so okay, they had the Mandy Rose slip, kind of a running joke now, her her slipping uh, at WrestleMania during her entrance with uh, Dana Brooke. So, of course, Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, they're making fun of that. And they have a tag team match. And <laughs> so now they're tying that running joke into Nia Jax now with two accidental slips during, like, this segment, this match. And after the second accidental slip with her trying to get back up on on the the apron it made pretty much Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke laugh and then they left the ring and took a count out loss what the heck just just from this 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 running gag of the the accidental slips and they got such a big laugh out of it, they just left the ring? Like... Oh, man. New Day defeated Elias and Jackson Riker, and... And once again, Drew McIntyre has yet another championship opportunity as he won a triple threat match between him... Randy Orton and Braun Strowman to secure a title shot against Bobby Lashley at Backlash. Oh, I'm sorry. WrestleMania Backlash. Okay. And Raw was trash as usual. Um, I will say NXT, NXT was uh, unique and pretty special. So this was the um, first episode of NXT with the new move to Tuesday nights. And they actually did quite well with this. So Karrion Cross comes out with Scarlett, now as the new NXT champion, now a two-time NXT champion, mind you. And the promo that he did, I gotta be honest, felt like a face promo more than a heel promo. It didn't really seem as, as terrorizing or as evil or as dangerous or ruthless as one would think, especially with this, this carrying cross. And actually, folks were cheering. Uh, they were letting out fall and pray uh, cheers for carrying cross. So, I mean... He was given respect and props to former champion Finn Balor. I mean, to be honest, this kind of felt a little bit faceish instead of heelish. I don't know. Maybe, maybe y'all saw something different. But the way this promo looked, it, it kind of looked like he is is like a face. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, Killian Dane and Drake Maverick got their tag team title shot against MSK. And what was really kind of weird, there were actually a, quite a bit of boos towards MSK. I don't know why, but thought that was really weird. Thought that was weird. But um, MSK, of course, did get the victory. But, um, I mean, this was a pretty good match. Like I said, Drake Maverick and Killian Day, while I don't like this tag team, you know, they're still both great wrestlers in the ring. So, um, then, of course, Imperium appeared and attacked Killian Day. I mean, you had Alexander Wolf, you had Fabian Eichner, you had um, Marcel Barthel. So... They're going to keep that going. And of course, you know, Killian Dane and Alexander Wolf have history. I mean, they were insanity together. So, yeah. Pretty interesting, though. 
Um, Mercedes Martinez had action against um, Jesse Kamea after Mercedes Martinez went to Robert Stone, demanded her her money. Jesse stepped to her. We'll see you in the ring. Um, Jesse Kamea, she brought it. She definitely brought it. And I kind of like uh, Jesse Kamea. But um, Mercedes, just a little too strong. Just a little too strong. And was able to get the victory. Uh, hit an air raid crash. Um, so she didn't do the Fishman's Buster, but hit the air raid crash. Um, and of course, she um, she did eventually get her money from Robert Stone. And uh, apparently called out Raquel Gonzalez. So she let it be known. Mercedes Martinez is going after that title of Raquel's. So it's looking like Mercedes could eventually be the next next challenger. That is, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if um, Io Shirai is going to get a rematch. Uh, we don't know if she's taking time off. My guess is she probably is taking time off. I mean, she wasn't even on this episode, so she's probably going to take some time off, which is well-earned, well-deserved. Um, we had a big, big shocker on this episode. Santos Escobar held an open challenge for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. You know, of course, he recently won the unified title in the ladder match at Stand and Deliver, defeating Jordan Devlin. Held an open challenge. Kushida, rocking some new gear, accepted. And, of course, great match between these two. You know, love Kushida. I've met Kushida. Big fan of Kushida. And finally, 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 in his WWE career, in his NXT career, Kushida has won the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. So we can now say that Kushida was a junior heavyweight champion and is now a cruiserweight champion here in the States. And I was just, I was ecstatic. I did not see this coming. But I am very, very happy for Kushida. Um, was able to get the, um, the pin to defeat Santos Escobar. And he is your new Cruiserweight Champion. You know, I was really hoping for him to have a title run, whether it was the North American title or the Cruiserweight title. But, you know, it took long enough. It took about one or two years. Two years, I think. I think Kushida's been, been here two years now the WWE, I think. But finally, tastes championship gold on WWE soil. I know he had the, the setback with the injury, but I'm just really happy for Kushida. And I really hope he gets a good, good Cruiserweight championship run. He deserves it. He's one of the best in the world. I mean, tore it up in New Japan Pro Wrestling. You know, let this dude have a good title run. I really hope he has a good title run, and I hope to see him versus Swerve. Because originally, I originally felt like Swerve should have thrown Santos Escobar, but I will definitely not complain with Kushida being the guy. I just, I hope eventually we get Kushida versus Swerve. I want to see that so badly. I want to see that. I would love to see that. So, looking forward to that. Congratulations to Kushida on winning the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. But, looks like Jordan Devlin wants a piece of Kushida, which is understandable. Jordan Devlin does have a victory over Kushida. So, I can understand this. And I think it's safe to say that Jordan Devlin is probably going to get the next title shot. So, I don't know. It looks like, I don't know if... Jordan Devlin is going to be sticking around the, the NXT umbrella for a bit. It sounds like it. So, looks like we could be seeing more Jordan Devlin here on uh, NXT. Um, we had a really, really special moment on NXT. 
where uh, Raquel Gonzalez got a chance to address the WWE Universe. Um, of course, Dakota Kai was there, um, shared some words, and then we had Frankie Monet. Frankie Monet. Ugh. Taya Valkyrie. Okay, that's that's the one time y'all gonna get it from me. That's the one time y'all gonna get it from me. But I will address her as, as Taya Valkyrie. Because the other name, Frankie Monet, that name sucks. Anyway, Taya Valkyrie makes her appearance. They exchange some words. She has her little little puppy dog. And um I don't know how soon we're gonna see uh Taya Valkyrie debut, but I'm looking forward to this. It looks like they may build her up to be the next challenger. Or or actually the first challenger for uh Raquel Gonzalez. And that should be good. But it kind of makes me wonder though how quick will her title reign be? Because I'm pretty sure Taya Valkyrie is going to get an NXT Women's Championship title run. It's it's bound to happen. I mean, we're talking about the longest reigning knockouts champion, so she's going to get her title run at some point here in NXT. But we had another special moment where both Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair show up in NXT and share the ring with Raquel Gonzalez. They embrace and they raise their titles up together. Special moment. Very, very special moment. You have to remember, these three came up through NXT, of course, at first through the Mae Young Classic. Because remember, all three of these ladies were in the Mae Young Classic. Um... Rhea Ripley and Raquel Gonzalez were in uh, both Mae Young Classics. Of course, Raquel was known as Reyna Gonzalez. Um, Bianca Belair was in the first Mae Young Classic. So, this was really, really special. You know, these three came up through that tournament and through the NXT umbrella. And now they are champions. You know, even though, even though Bianca Belair is just tasting championship gold for the first time because she never did win the NXT Women's title. It's still a big moment considering she came from the NXT umbrella. Rhea Ripley. Wow, Rhea Ripley. Look at her resume now. First ever NXT UK Women's Champion. Former NXT Women's Champion. You know, became, you know, set the record to be the first woman to win both of those, to have held both of those titles. And now, she's the Raw Women's Champion. So, Rhea Ripley's had quite a journey. And she's, she's a three-time champion now. Raquel Gonzalez. You know, ever since really kind of putting her in singles action having feuds with Io Shirai and Rhea Ripley and uh, many others. Raquel Gonzalez has been tearing it up. Um, really, ever since War Games, she's just been tearing it up. And she ends up being the one to the throne, Io Shirai. And that's the thing. She dethroned Io Shirai fair and square. Because remember, Dakota Kai got ejected. So... You know, got to give props to all three of these ladies. This was a special moment, and I thought that was really cool, having this sort of NXT reunion, and all three of them hoisting up their championships. And they even did a photo shoot with uh, Triple H. And, you know, you got to give you got to give props to Triple H, because, hey, Triple H, NXT umbrella, he knows talent. Triple H knows talent. And this shows. This definitely shows. So, very special moment. Um, we had a really great match between uh, 
Swerve and Leon Ruff. And um, like I said, it's looking like uh, they're going to keep this rivalry going for quite a bit. But definitely love these two in the ring. These two are great high flyers. And I could never get tired of these two, to be honest with you. Um, but Swerve did get the victory. But Leon Ruff did get the last laugh backstage, giving uh, Swerve an ambush, a beat down. Clearly, this rivalry is not over. And then the main event, which was kind of funny, we had The Way versus Bronson Reed, Dexter Loomis, and the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, Shotzi Blackheart and Moon. One second. Now, of course, this match was great. And it even got to the point where <laughs> Indy Hartwell was just... She was trying so hard to get that kiss from Dexter Loomis. I mean, just... She... <laughs> Let's 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 be real. Indy Indy Hartwell wanted to wanted to jump his bones. So let's just let's just keep it real. But um <laughs> Oh man. And then of course there was a moment where you know Indy Hartwell tried to try to pull a a sleeping beauty or Snow White, whichever one you want to go, um, laid across the apron wanting that kiss. She didn't quite get that kiss, but Dexter Loomis did pick her up and carry her to the back. And then, of course, she gave the thumbs up. So, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how that how that happens. You know, Indy Hartwell's part of the way. She's had this crush on um, Dexter Loomis. And, well, we'll just see what happens. We'll see what happens. But, ultimately, uh... Brunson Reed was able to get get the the tsunami um, onto Austin Theory and got the victory for his team, him, Shotzi, Ember. And of course, you know Johnny Gargano, Candice LeRae, Austin Theory, they're they're I'm sure they're pretty pretty angry with Indy Hartwell. I know Candice LeRae kept trying to, like, snap her out of it and stop her and pull her away from Dexter Loomis, but I can, I'm can i pretty sure they're going to be angry. Pretty sure they're going to be really angry. But this was actually a pretty dang on good episode of NXT to start off the move to Tuesday nights. So that, this was definitely a lot better uh, post-stand um, and deliver. Definitely a lot better than Raw and, Raw and SmackDown post-WrestleMania. That's a given. Um, couple of things from NXT UK. Uh, just not a lot, but um, they've sparked the, the new rivalry between Kenny Williams and Amir Jordan. Kenny Williams was able to uh, get the victory. Um, of course, cheating. Expose the turnbuckle. Um, but a couple of other things. Looks like Jack Stars is on the rise. He's got himself a singles victory over Ashton Smith. Uh, Isla Dawn got a victory over Amelia McKenzie, which, um, you know, it looks like Isla Dawn is going to start probably getting more victories. You know, she's looking... It's looking like she's being established as um, one of the other heels. I mean, you got Kaylee Ray, you got Jenny, you got um, Nina Samuels, and and you got Isla Dawn now. So you got you got a handful there. You got a nice little handful of female heels, and I think that balances is out with the the female faces. But um, Nathan Frazier was in action. Took down Big Jack uh, Saxon Huxley. So I thought that was that was pretty cool, but um, had Gallus um, square off with Primate and T Bone and Eddie Dennis on the Supernova sessions, which I don't know what's up with uh, Wild Boar. I guess 
I guess is he just done for? Because I don't know if we're going to see Wild Boar again. I, I hope, but I don't know. I kind of liked him and Primate together, but it is what it is. But um, there was a moment backstage with Aoife Valkyrie and Mako Satomura, and it looks like we're going to have ourselves a match soon between Eva Valkyrie and Mako Satomura. Now, I'll say this. This is bold. This is really, really bold. Because this could potentially give Eva Valkyrie her first loss. Now, I'll say this. If Eva Valkyrie dethrones the final boss, Mako Satomura, then honestly, I have no doubt that Aoife Valkyrie is going to be the one to dethrone Kaylee Ray. It, it has to be. It has to be. She's undefeated. She, she has to be the one that ends up dethroning Kaylee Ray for the NXT UK Women's Championship. And... You know, to be honest, I know a lot of people would probably be freaked out. Oh, Mako Satomura shouldn't be losing to no Aoife Valkyrie. Well, we have to also keep in mind, Mako Satomura may not necessarily be there on NXT UK to be the main star. You know, she could be on there to help out enhancement talent. I mean, she also is an NXT tr UK trainer as well. She's a wrestler and a trainer on the NXT UK roster. So keep that in mind. And she is a big name that could really help training and bringing up the enhancement talent in NXT UK. So keep that in mind. You know, we can't flip out whenever she, she gets a loss like this. Because we have to remember what... what is her main role really you know so just keep that in mind but I just really feel like if Eva Valkyrie gets this victory I feel like it's 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 a sure thing that she's gonna be the one that dethrones Kaylee Ray but we'll see should be a good matchup though should be really good Smackdown which honestly Smackdown was kind of lackluster I feel like the only good part of SmackDown was the celebration for Bianca Belair that the Street Profits threw together. That was, I felt like that was the highlight for me. I mean, the tag team title match, uh, Street Profits versus the Dirty Dogs, I mean, that was, that was all right. But everything else just, I mean... Rey Mysterio defeated Otis. I mean, eh, cool. Once again, Kevin Owens, even though it was a count-out victory, Kevin Owens, once again, another victory over Sami Zayn, which, you know, Sami Zayn paid for it anyway because he got stunned at the end of it. So it's just... This is getting kind of ridiculous. Um, Shayna, ba Shayna Baszler... Once again, eats another loss, another singles loss. Honestly, I I would be shocked if Shayna Baszler hasn't requested her release by now, or at least attempted to. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. You have her as women's tag team champion, and yet she's eating singles losses. Back and forth, back and forth, and under a minute and two minutes and all that. And you're having her eat losses, singles losses. I don't get it. I really don't get it. And then Cesaro was, was having a great match with Jey Uso, but Seth Rollins strikes, ruins it. Cesaro gets the disqualification victory, but... And not, not only that... Seth Rollins didn't even do much. 
He just kind of took him and just gave him the forearm to the back of the head, and that was it. That was it. Didn't give him a, a stomp or, or, or nothing. That was it. He just did that and just got out the ring. Like... Yeah, SmackDown was, was lackluster. It was really lackluster. Both Raw and SmackDown. And these are supposed to be the, the first episodes starting a new season post-WrestleMania. And they just really dropped the ball. So. Yeah. And then, I mean... And the whole thing with with Alexa Bliss, like I, it just it just makes no sense to me. So now, so now all of a sudden you don't need the fiend. Now all of a sudden you got all this power, and it's just okay. That's it. And then the fiend looked like he was having church, and he's like, you know, this the new me. I've been reborn. The fun house is back. Yay! I I don't know. I don't know. I just I I don't know what that was. The Bray Wyatt just that didn't really explain anything. You know, Alexa has a new friend, Li Lily. <laughs> Whatever. I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I just... Yeah. Anyway. Um... And then... Also want to... Talk about the recent... Releases that took place... With WWE... And, you know, I got to be honest, this was, this was surprising. This was very surprising. And the crazy thing about this is that this happened the other day, exactly one year from when they did this same handful of cuts and releases last year the pandemic purge pretty much so let me let's go through and uh let me let's let's just go through this list these were um the releases um from WWE let's start off with uh the iconics both Billy Kay and Peyton Royce now let's just let's just keep it real. WWE ruined the iconics. And they were something good. And they flat out ruined them. They should have never been split. I mean they were comedy gold. Yeah, they were annoying, but they did that very well. They had chemistry. And when they returned, they were even better in the ring when they returned. You split them up with the hopes that they could be single stars, or I don't know if there was so much on, you know, selling the idea of Peyton Royce breaking out into being this big single star, but that didn't happen. I mean, she put on some some good matches, but didn't really go anywhere. And then, sure enough, you end up releasing both of them. It's just really sad. You know, you split them up, and you end up releasing them both the same day. Just tag team at WWE ruined they had something great with the iconics and splitting them up just flat out ruined them 
and they were not able to really do well after they were split. So I just, I don't know. Where could I see the Iconics going? I mean, I don't know. Which I'll get, I'll get into more of that uh, after I go through the list. Um, Mickey James. This shot the mess out of me. They released Mickey James. Mickey James is another one of the the female icons of the WWE. Has quite a history. I mean, went up against greats like Trish Stratus, Victoria, Lita. I mean, Mickey James is up there. You know, multiple time women's champion, divas champion, tore it up also in Impact Wrestling. Hardcore country. Mickey James came back, you know, had a great match on, on NXT uh, TakeOver Toronto against Asuka. You know, still shows that she's going and can go in the ring. And even at over 40 years of age, still great in the ring, can still give you that good match. Not to mention, I was really hoping that Mickey James was finally going to get that one final run, women's championship run, whether it was SmackDown or Raw, would get that one final big run in the WWE. Much deserved. And they cut her. Why? Because of some petty pettiness that WWE had against her husband, Nick Aldis? Like, really? Mickey James is one of the greats to have wrestled in WWE. And they, they, they cut her like this? It's ridiculous. So ridiculous. Tucker. Formerly one half of uh, Heavy Machinery with Otis. Another tag team, the WWE, ruined. You had something good there with Heavy Machinery. You had good chemistry. But through the whole midst of the money in the bank and Otis winning that, to Tucker turning on Otis in a match where The Miz won the Money in the Bank contract, and then y'all do nothing with that feud. After that heel turn, you do nothing. They had the draft, you split them both up, you put them on separate brands. We see Tucker maybe once or twice, maybe during the chase down of the 24-7 titles. And you cut him. He was in the Andre the Giant Memorial uh, Battle Royal. And that was pretty much his last match. Bam. Released. Really unfortunate, but like I said, that's another one of the reasons why the Money in the Bank match should die. And like I said, another tag team. Ruined. Didn't do any follow-up or anything like that after the heel turn of Tucker turning against Otis. No follow-up whatsoever. And that's it. He's gone. It's just, it's so bad. So bad. Wesley Blake. Now, Wesley Blake... I thought there was a rumor that they were going to reunite him with Buddy Murphy. Of course, you know, they were NXT Tag Team Champions back in um, back in NXT, um, where they used to be managed by uh, Alexa Bliss. Um, the Forgotten Sons was a thing, but after the whole mess behind some of the political posts and stuff from Jackson Riker... The whole Forgotten Sons, that, that blew up. And then that disbanded. 
Um, and I know Steve Cutler um, was eventually released. They had that they had that temporary partnership under Barrett King Corbin, which was just that didn't last. So I mean, it was just it was just unfortunate. I can't say that I'm too shocked because I mean they they really didn't put him back in any storyline, especially after the. Forgotten Sons disbanded. I thought they were going to bring him back together with Murphy, Buddy Murphy, but that didn't happen. So, just really unfortunate for Wesley Blake. Kalisto. This was another one that shocked the mess out of me. Kalisto, a.k.a. Samurai Del Sol, is another excellent wrestler. Uh, Multiple-time uh, United States champion. Former um, NXT Tag Team Champion with um, uh, Sin Cara, the Lucha Dragons. Lucha, Lucha, Lucha. But excellent wrestler in the ring. I know that he was split from the um, Lucha House Party, but I was hoping he could have he could have been one that returned to NXT. Could have been going after the Cruiserweight Championship. Or... They really could have showcased them more, maybe feud with Rey Mysterio, or maybe even partner with Rey Mysterio. But they cut him. So that was that shocked the mess out of me. You know, they they didn't have him on TV as much since the split up. I mean, they had a had him in backstage moments, but since the split up with Lucha House Party, they just haven't featured him much. And he's a great wrestler. So that one that one was a shock to me. Chelsea Green. Now, this this was definitely an unfortunate bummer because she was on her way to a comeback but got injured and just did not get another opportunity. And it's it's unfortunate cuz Chelsea Green, she's good in the ring. She had something strong going on NXT, got moved to the main roster, but got injured. And just, I really would have liked to have seen her get a chance. I really do. But she never got that chance on the main roster. And just, it sucked that it that it came down to this. It, it, it really sucked. But, um, yeah, it was really unfortunate. Um, Bo Dallas. Okay. I can't say that I'm that surprised about Bo Dallas, because Bo Dallas, he hasn't even been on TV since, what, 2019? I think the last match that he had, I think Curtis Axel was still still there, and they were uh, the B team. So, honestly, I mean, I can't say that I'm too shocked with this one. I mean, the dude, the dude hadn't been on TV. He hadn't, he hadn't been on TV since, like, a, since 2019. I mean, I mean, it's cool that he was still able to collect a paycheck, but dude hadn't been on TV. So, yeah, that's all I could really say with that. I mean, it would have been nice if they had done something with him, but they didn't. No. So, yeah. Mojo Raleigh. I mean, I was never really big on Mojo Raleigh. I mean, I know he had the heel turn on uh Zack Ryder. And you know, they were you know, he was he was a he was more much bigger at back at NXT and you know they had quite a, a good tag team in the hype bros. But I mean I've never really been that big on Mojo Raleigh. Um, he had the heel turn. I think he was. I think they were feuding. He was feuding with Aleister Black at one point. I think, um, as well as Zack Ryder. And I think he wrestled a bit on main event, but I mean, 
I don't know. I just was never really sold on Mo Mojo Raleigh. Um, <sighs> Samoa Joe. You know, I was thinking that when they made the the commentator edition for Raw, I was thinking that was a sign that Samoa Joe was going to be returning to the ring. Which apparently he's been wanting to return to the ring, but apparently the word is he never got cleared by WWE doctor and medical squad to return to the ring. But... Samoa Joe was great on commentary. I mean, he was doing his thing. It was just such a bummer that they released him. Um, I just, I really hope. And, but, I, but I honestly believe it won't take too long before he gets picked up. I really feel he, he's got a home somewhere. So I don't think it'll be too long until he gets picked up. Now, as far as, like, where I think a lot of the talent could go, I mean, Samoa Joe, I mean, he's, he's Impact Wrestling alumni. He's ROH alumni. I mean, he could go to AEW. Oh, and before I continue on with that, folks need to stop assuming that just because somebody is released, oh, they should go to AEW. AEW, AEW. Oh, they're not getting booked well in WWE. They should go to AEW. Just because they're not with WWE or get booked there does not mean that by default they will end up getting booked correctly or shining in AEW. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they want to go to AEW. Like... We have to also keep in mind that these wrestlers are going to go where they feel that they will do well at. They're going to go where their hearts desire, whether that's back to the Indies, whether that's to ROH, uh, to another country, Impact Wrestling, wherever. But we need to stop assuming that everything will just be made better if they go to AEW. That's not automatic. We need to get out of that mindset just because we want to see WWE suffer. You know, some fans may mark out for AEW or, or just want to see WWE suffer. I get it. But just because they get let go somewhere does not mean automatically they're going to shine in AEW. AEW isn't the only successful promotion out there. Nor is it the only promotion that exists. And at the end of the day, if Samoa Joe wanted to go to Impact Wrestling and he would be happy, then that's all I really care about. That's all I care about. If they're going to, to promotions where they feel they can shine and they feel that they can be happier, I'm all for that. It could be some sort of indie circuit. If that's where they want to go and they're happy there, great. But it just it gets annoying when a lot of these pro wrestling fans are like, oh, they're no longer with this company. Oh, AEW, AEW. No. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're that AEW is gonna end up being best fit nor does it automatically mean it's going to work out. There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee. Main thing is that they go where they want to go and where they feel they will be happiest and successful. Keep that in mind. But, you know, the Iconics, who knows? I mean, I could see them... You know, maybe Impact Wrestling, maybe even ROH. I mean, you know, I mean, do you keep them as a tag team? I I would think so. It'll be good to see them debut as a tag team somewhere. Um, Tucker. Not sure. Not sure. Wesley Blake. 
Not sure. Kalisto? I mean, Kalisto, you could put, you could pretty much put him anywhere. You know, whether he goes back to, um, I mean, he could go to Impact Wrestling, ROH, AEW, New Japan, uh, CMLL, or somewhere. Like, he could go anywhere, and he would do fine. Um, Bo Dallas. You know, this sounds weird. I could see I could see Bo Dallas in uh, NWA. And maybe even uh, Tucker and Wesley Blake. Maybe in uh, NWA or AEW. But I could actually see Bo Dallas in uh, NWA. I know that sounds weird. But I think I could see him in in uh, NWA. Uh, Chelsea Green. I mean, I guess she could return to Impact Wrestling as Laurel Van Ness. I mean, Zack Ryder, a.k.a. Matt Cardona, is there. You know, her husband's there. So, again, I mean, she could do that. I mean, ROH could work. Um, you know, they got that women's tournament coming up to uh, crown a new um, Women of Honor champion. So she could. She could debut for that. But um, Chelsea Green, you could pretty much put anywhere, and I think she'll do fine. Um, Mojo Raleigh, maybe NWA? I don't know. Maybe NWA. Samoa Joe, another one you could pretty much put anywhere. Like I said, he's ROH and Impact Wrestling alumni. Um... Could tear it up in AEW, New Japan. I mean, you could put him anywhere. My main concern is, can he get cleared to wrestle again? Because we got to remember, Samoa Joe, he's had some success, but he's been injury prone. You know, the concussions, the knee injuries, like, he's, he's injury prone. So, I mean, I hope he can get cleared to get back in the ring again. But even if not, he could still go to ROH or Impact Wrestling and be a be on the commentary team and still deliver Impact on the mic. I mean, after all, he's alumni. He's well-known, well-respected. But um, we'll see what happens. Like I said, I hope each of these wrestlers get a chance to continue their careers elsewhere. I, I hope it doesn't take long for them to find jobs. It's just really crazy that this same thing happened exactly a year ago. And, you know, one, you would think WWE's, you know, this financial budget cuts or whether, or whichever, but realistically, it, it it's it's ironic if this if these are budget cuts yet despite you know you got the deal with Fox you got the the deal with um with DraftKings you got the multi million dollar deal with uh, the WWE Network going to Peacock it's like uh it just makes me feel. Like, uh, are these really budget cuts? Are these really financial cuts? Are y'all really in a bind? Well, y'all just spent all that money on partnership with DraftKings and Peacock, so... Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's just... It just really makes me question some things with, with uh, WWE and just decisions that they make but yeah I, I don't know but anyway uh that concludes this uh pro wrestling talk episode uh, i know we went pretty long one of my longest episodes but just there was a lot to talk about but let me know what y'all think um what y'all think about Cinderella Tournament? What do y'all think about the WWE um, talent that got released? Um, all the post-WrestleMania 
stuff. Let me know what y'all think. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And thank you so much for watching. This is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram signing off. Hope everybody has a blessed weekend. Peace.